Well, hello everyone. My name is Edward Daniel and welcome to FC Vegan. Today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Jeff Leach. Jeff has just given a really, really interesting talk about the human gut uh, at uh, High Street Kensington at the Whole Foods store. Uh, and we've, we've just had an hour worth of you talking to us and delivering a wonderful message about the gut and how it interacts with our human body. Mm -hmm. So yes. Yeah. So uh, how was it for you? How about the talk? No, it was great. It was a good crowd. I'm actually glad people showed up. It was kind of fun. There's, there's loads of people. There must have been about 100 people. Yeah, but, no, it was I fun. Mean, are you used to getting to, talking to so many people? Oh, yeah. No, I, uh, yeah, no, it's just a nice group and it's a, an engaged group. And interestingly enough, predominantly female, which was interesting, which is all, yeah. seemed to gravitate towards these talks. But no, I give lots of talks, large groups of people, so it was fun. So you've just been talking about the Hamza, Hamza, Hadza tribe, who are based in Tanzania. Right. And uh, their gut, their micro, the microbes in their gut seems to be very different to us in the West. I mean, what's the reason for that? Yeah, we, we work with the Hadza in East Africa because they still literally get up every day, hunt the same animals, gather the same plants that humans have for millions of years. The babies are still born in the grass hut on the ground. Uh, they're covered in the, the urine, the blood, and the feces of basically all the plants and animals, water and dirt on the landscape. And because of that, they're exposed uh, to microbes in a way that, let's say, you and I aren't in London. For example, we have a window between you and I in the environment outside. The total number of animals roaming the streets compared to East Africa is greatly diminished, and thus possibly the microbial diversity as well. So the Hadza are interesting because uh, we know our immune system is developed early in life, and then we know our immune system is challenged early in life, and it's trained. And so by being exposed to this diversity of microbes on the on the African savanna, the, the Hadza uh, potentially have a, a, a much more robust immune system. You fast forward to today in London, where we don't have that same kind of exposure because of hygiene and westernization and overall sterilization of our environment, uh, our immune system potentially develops a little bit differently, and then th thus why we have autoimmune disease. And how does that impact on the diseases that we suffer in the West compared to uh, East Africa then? That's a good question. There's not a lot, because uh, the Hadza group that we work with, there's not a lot of medical research with them, so we don't know long term how it impacts them, but we also know the Hadza have very, very low rates, rates of obesity. We have reasons to believe they have low, low rates of cancer, autoimmune disease. They have a short life expectancy, but it's mainly because of er early childhood mortality, mm -hmm. not necessarily diet. But how does childhood mortality uh, be affected by gut? Is it, is it to do with disease? I mean, what's the impact? Yeah. Microbes on that. yeah, in terms of mortality, you know, one out of five Hadza kids don't make it to age five. Uh, and it's typical is that they die from malaria, childbirth, simple complications with infections. Uh, we don't believe it has, has that much or anything to do with autoimmune disease. And so, again, the life expectancy and the disease rate in the Hadza seems to be associated with things that we cure very easily in the West. They don't have easy access to antibiotics, so simple infections can kill them but this has very little to do with diet. And so what kills what we think our early ancestors and the Hadza is very different than what kills us today. So how can we cope in the West? Because obviously in the West, we don't have uh, this biodiversity that, we, that, that happens in East, uh, East Africa. Yeah, one of the things that I suggest to people, you know, we, we in the West uh, possess a much lower diversity of microbes in our on our bodies and in our bodies than let's say groups in East Africa. And so, and the reason for that is because we live in very sterile environments. So, and we think that that reduced diversity of bacterial communities in our bodies may be contributing to some of our diseases of the Western world. So if diversity is interesting to you and the scientific community thinks it is, just like any ecosystem, a terrestrial ecosystem, an aquatic ecosystem, your inner ecosystem in your gut, if you can improve that diversity, you may improve your resilience to disease and so one way to do that is we know through the American and British Gut Project which you can sign up for online that people that eat a greater diversity of plant species have a greater diversity of microbes in their body. We know that people that exercise outside more and it makes perfect sense or spend more time outside they have a greater diversity of microbes as well. So simply reconnecting with nature, maybe pet the dog that walks by go to the pasture, walk around, don't worry about swimming in a river, you don't have to swim in a chlorinated swimming pool all the time, just rewilding your life and reconnecting with nature, just go laying out in the grass, 
may improve your, your microbiome, both your skin and your inner ecosystem as well. Now, sterilization is a big thing in the West. I mean, how can we get a, move away from that? I don't think we're going to move away from it. You know, it's a double-edged sword. You know, the improved hygiene has, has saved a lot of lives. You know, we, we have clean water supply now. We don't have as many pathogens moving around. The, the fecal-oral connection has been greatly reduced. So, so that's been attenuated and dealt with. And the other thing is the parasites as well, because we don't have the prevalence of parasites. Yeah, the parasitic load in Western populations is, is much less than we see in rural populations. And it's open debate on whether or not that, that parasitic load is beneficial or not. So kind of an open question.